The Clone Wars were fought all across the galaxy on countless worlds. A very lucky few systems managed to escape the conflict unscathed. Most saw battle at least once. Some saw battle many times, as was the case with Kamino. Being the location of the Kaminoan cloning facilities and thus the homeworld of the Grand Army of the Republic, Kamino was a tempting target for the CIS all throughout the war. With each attempt, however, the tactics were radically different, forcing the planet's defenders to adjust their reaction each time. In all cases, however, the battles of Kamino were desperate moments for the Republic, times when the Confederacy came close to snuffing out the GAR for good. We've discussed these battles in the past, but today we'll be focusing on their naval theatres and how the tactics on both sides evolved. Attention, Sergeant on deck! The first Battle of Kamino took place a mere two months into the Clone Wars. This offensive was led by Pasal Argente, the magistrate of the Corporate Alliance, who had no military experience but was looking to amass political power by winning an important battle. Argente was assisted by Commander Mirai, a Mon Calamari war hero, ardent separatist, and expert in amphibious warfare. They attacked Kamino with at least one Luka Hulk class battleship, which carried C9979 landing craft for the ground assault, vulture droids for the inevitable starfighter battle, and amphibious fighters flown by Mirai's handpicked Mon Calamari pilots. It was a small attack force, but separatist intelligence indicated that it would be sufficient to capture Topoka City. The separatist fleet arrived above Kamino to find the planet only lightly defended, with only one wing of Delta VII Jedi starfighters and some LAAT gunships in orbit. The Jedi had some of their best pilots on station to defend Kamino, including Anakin Skywalker, Obi-Wan Kenobi, Aayla Sakura, Cossex, and Tu Choi, plus at least a dozen others. They focused on destroying the Separatists' landing craft and vulture droids while they descended to Kamino's surface, initially ignoring the Separatists' capital ships. The reason why became apparent when a Republic fleet joined the fight. The Republic had learned of the impending attack on Kamino in advance, and the Jedi's plan had been to lure the Separatists into a false sense of security and then attack their battleships from behind with the vanguard of their fleet. Seisi Tin led at least two acclimated class assault ships in engaging Argente's fleet, throwing the Separatist offensive into chaos. Nonetheless, Vulture droids were able to shoot down several of the Jedi pilots, and many of the Confederacy's landing craft made it to Topoka City. The result was a fierce ground battle that the Republic came very close to losing. But thanks to the Jedi and the newly deployed ARC troopers, the defenders of Topoka City were able to repulse the assault. Tin's fleet routed Argente's battleships, and Mirai, in a last-ditch attempt to turn the battle around, headed down to Kamino's surface in his personal starfighter, the Shark. He attempted to destroy Topoka City by targeting its underwater main reactor, only to discover that there was no such reactor, and the plans of the city CIS intelligence had received were incorrect. As Argente sounded the order to retreat, Mirai destroyed the Jedi Starfighter's hyperspace rings in a suicide run, a desperate but ultimately useless final attack. The first Battle of Kamino was a disaster for the Confederacy, deliberately so, as Dooku wanted to use the battle to knock Argente down a peg and Darth Sidious wanted to use it to kill Commander Mirai. But the next offensive would be much better planned. Later, in 22 BBY, General Grievous and Asajj Ventress began planning another assault on Kamino. Ventress infiltrated to Poker City to get more accurate intelligence, while Grievous attempted to covertly capture the Republic's outpost on the Rishi Moon to give his forces the element of surprise. The mission was aborted when a few surviving clones managed to destroy the Rishi Moon outpost and alerted the Republic to the impending attack, but Grievous and Ventress would try again in mid-21 BBY. This time, they spared no expense on their invasion force. Grievous came to Kamino with a sizable fleet, led from the General's personal flagship, Providence-class carrier-slash-destroyer. The fleet also included three Lucra hulk class battleships, three Ricosent-class light destroyers, and ten Munificent-class star frigates. These capital ships were supported by thousands of Vulture droids, plus the new Tri-Fighters and Hyena bombers. 
Yet again, the purpose of this fleet was to deliver an invasion force of tens of thousands of battle droids to Topoka City. The Republic, for its part, was also not messing around. It had a fleet of 10 Veneta class Star Destroyers, commanded by Admiral Yularen from the Star Destroyer Resolute, plus an acclimated class assault ship and two Architens class light cruisers in low orbit over Kamino. This blockade was supported by thousands of starfighters, many more than the Republic usually fielded. These were predominantly V-19 torrent starfighters, but the Republic also deployed ARC-170 starfighters, BTLB Y-wing bombers, and Delta-7B Jedi starfighters during the battle. Several veteran Republic squadrons were present for the battle, including Shadow Squadron. Republic starfighter forces were led by Anakin Skywalker. Grievous began the battle with a full-on assault on the Republic blockade, appearing to be pursuing conventional attack strategies. The ferocity of the attack was unexpected, and the Republic was immediately put on the defensive. The two fleets tore into each other while their starfighter squadrons battled between, immediately incurring high casualties for both sides. Grievous sent out squadrons of hyena bombers to soften up the Republic Star Destroyers, but Skywalker and his pilots were able to prevent them from doing any serious damage, and the Republic responded with Y-Wing bombing runs against the Separatist fleet, targeting Grievous's cruisers. Between fire from the Republic fleet and the bombing runs, several munificent class star frigates were destroyed or subjected to heavy damage. Admiral Yularen noted that Grievous seemed almost eager to sacrifice his cruisers, apparently to shield his flagship from Republic fire. Munificent after Munificent was destroyed, showering Kamino in debris each time, but this was all according to Grievous's plan. As Obi-Wan Kenobi discovered, the battle in orbit was a diversion. The Separatist offensive appeared to be a conventional assault, like the first battle of Kamino had been, but it wasn't. Grievous was deliberately throwing his cruisers away because they had re-entry pods containing disassembled Trident-class assault ships affixed to their hulls. As debris from the naval battle plummeted into Kamino's oceans, aqua droids from Asajj Ventress's personal Trident craft reassembled the assault ships, each of which contained payloads of battle droids. When the craft were assembled, the assault ships leapt out of the sea and attacked Topoka City, disgorging droid armies and catching the city's defenders off guard. Once the assault began, Grievous left the naval battle to his tactical droid aid, TV-94B, and joined his armies in Topoka City. He led an assault on the clone army's barracks, hoping to slaughter as many of the Republic soldiers as he could, while Ventress attempted to steal Jango Fett's DNA samples. Republic forces scrambled to repulse the assault, led by several ARC troopers. Jedi Master Shak Ti commanded the defense of the city, and she was soon joined by Obi-Wan Kenobi and Anakin Skywalker, the latter of whom abandoned the starfighter battle to defend the city. Ultimately, the battle was decided by the fight on the ground, not the naval battle. Kenobi and the GAR managed to repulse Grievous' offensive, while Skywalker prevented Ventress from stealing Fett's DNA. Grievous and Ventress were forced to retreat back to orbit, where what remained of Grievous' fleet abandoned the flight. The Separatists suffered heavy casualties, many of them deliberate sacrifices of munificent class star frigates. The Republic also suffered heavy casualties for starfighters and ground troops, but it didn't seem to have lost a single capital ship. While both battles of Kamino were decided on the ground, the naval theaters played major roles in both battles as well. In Grievous and Ventress's assault, the attack on Topoka City hinged on casualties sustained in the naval battle, which was where the Confederacy seemed to have committed the bulk of their forces. What's more, even though the naval battle was a diversion, Grievous still had Republic naval forces on the back foot, and if the defenders of Kamino hadn't fought as hard in orbit as they did, the Confederacy could have taken the planet with a conventional assault. But the Republic's naval forces fought tooth and nail to defend Kamino, and because of that, the Grand Army of the Republic survived to keep fighting. So that's our look at the space theaters of the Battle of Kamino. But what do you think? Are there other battles you think we should analyze? Let us know which space battle over Kamino was your favorite. And as always guys, thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video.